Hello guys, this is Paul Mulquarter from TopTechBoy.com with lesson number 19 on using the Raspberry Pi microcontroller and specifically we're running Linux and we're kind of learning Linux. If you've been with us with the first 18 lessons, you're getting comfortable with Linux at this time. You're able to really start doing some pretty neat things with Linux. Now in lesson number 18, we got to the point that we showed you that you can log into your Raspberry Pi over a network from any Windows-based computer that is running PuTTY. PuTTY is a free SSH Telnet client which you can install on any Windows machine and then from anywhere on your network you can log into your Raspberry Pi. <coughs> that is really nice because then you don't even have to have your Raspberry Pi hooked up, Raspberry Pi hooked up to a monitor. All you got to do is just have that Ethernet cable into it and then you can log on to it through PuTTY. Well, if I can log on to it from any computer in this room, you see there's my room, lots of computers, I can log on to it from any computer in this room uh, using PuTTY, that opens up the interesting possibility of having multiple people log into it at the same time. And for me, I'm thinking like, you know, all the students could be logging on to one Raspberry Pi <clears throat> at the same time. In order to do that, we really need to have more than just one user. We need to be able to have the different students have their own account and then have it sort of set up where they're kind of kept in their own little folder, they're kept in their own little area. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> now that we can remotely log into the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi, the next step is we want to be able to set up users and then have different users be able to log on to the Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> let's look and see how many users we have now. Well, where are we? First of all, we go to we go to PWD, and you can see that we're in the slash home slash pi folder. What this means is that if I go to change directory slash home, this is where all your users are. So now I'm in my the home folder. Let's see how many users we have. So I do an ls and you can see that really there's just one user that user is pi that's who I'm logged on as is pi so I can go to pi's folder my folder so I can go change directory pi ls and now this is my little folder this is my little raspberry pi world as the user pi I'm in my slash home slash pi folder <coughs> this is where I should work this is where I should put my files this is where I should do my stuff now, what we want to do though is we want to add other users. Okay, so if I'm going to add another user, <clears throat> the Pi user is set up as a super user. So if I want to do a super user command, this is where you go in and really start manipulating the, <clears throat> the operating system and doing things at a higher level. To do that type of thing, I have to say sudo. sudo makes me a super user for at least this one command. And now I'm going to add other users. So I'm going to say user add. So I'm going to make a new user. And I'm going to make a folder for one of my students or an account for one of my students. His name is Austin. And then I need to put dash m, which is saying make all the directories, create the home directories, make all that stuff that you're going to need. <clears throat> then I need to put minus s, which is going to tell it the shell that he's going to use and that would just about always be slash bin <coughs> slash bash so he's going to just like me be using the slash bin slash bash shell and now I need to say kind of like what group is he going to be in well I don't want to put him in the pseudo group I don't want to make him a pseudo user or sort of a pi level user I want to make him just member of users that means he can do things he can run things, he can mind his own business in his own folder, but he can't do too much damage in other places. And so this is kind of the default group. Okay, boom. Now, <clears throat> before I go on, I need to give him a password. So I need to say sudo passwd. <clears throat> and then who am I giving a password to? Well, I'm giving a password to Austin. Okay, what do I want his password to be? cat. Okay, because that's easy to remember. <coughs> Retype the new Unix password cat. Ooh, I updated successfully. Alright, so now 
if I go back and I say change directory slash home, let's look at this. LS, I've got two user folders. I have Austin and I have Pi. Let's make one more. Let's say uh, sudo user add and let's say Davis. Okay. Minus M, make a directory for him. Minus S, well, what shell is he going to use? He's going to use the bin dot bash. <coughs> what user group is he going to be in? Users. Okay. Now, what do I need to do? Set him a password. So I'm going to go P, I'm going to do sudo, because all these things require super users. Sudo P A S S W D. <coughs> and then I'm going to go. Uh, Davis, and what is his password? Cat. Cat. Okay. Now let's look LS. Look at this. I have three users Austin, Davis, and Pi. All right. I'm Pi. Now Austin could log in <coughs> and Davis could log in. So let's go along and let's kind of let's play along with this. So let's say that normally uh, you, you log in when you boot the Pi up and the terminal window comes up you could log into one of these other accounts but I'm gonna log in from here and the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna say log in <coughs> and then uh, okay I guess I cannot possibly work without effective root so I'm gonna say sudo login alright uh, the Raspberry Pi login I'm gonna log in as Austin okay and then the password is cat Okay, so now I get this login welcome. And look at this, now I am no longer Pi, I am Austin. Okay, Austin. So let's see what Austin can do. Where is he when he logs in? He is in the slash home slash Austin folder. What does he have? Not much. He does not have much to work with there, but could he create a new directory? So let's say, uh, he, say uh, make directory oops make directory my files uh, and then ls uh, look now he has a folder called my files let's say he gets curious and he says cd slash okay ls he can go up to the root directory and he can look at it he could go change directory slash home he could go change directory uh, let's see, where is he now? LS. Hmm, Austin's wondering what Davis is up to. Change directory. Davis. He can get in there. He can LS. He can look around. Now he's going to make directory stink foot. He's going to put that into, uh, into Davis's folder just to be funny. And he does that. Make directory. Cannot create directory stink foot permission denied. Ah, he's going to get tricky. He's going to say sudo make directory stink foot. You, uh, oh, look at this. So he's. He's gotten somewhere. We trust you have received the usual lecture from the local system administrator. It usually boils down to these things to respect the privacy of others, which he's not doing. Think before you type, which he's not doing. Uh, with great power comes great responsibility. The pseudo password for Austin is cat. Ooh, Austin is not in the pseudo uh, the, the pseudo user's file. This incident will be reported. Austin is now in trouble. So now if we look here, you can see that that folder was not created. Okay, let's see. Uh, Austin is going to try to user delete. Okay, and he's going to try to user delete Davis. He's going to try to blow Davis off of the system. It says permission de denied. He cannot do this as, as, uh, as uh, Austin. So what he's going to do is sudo and he's going to do user delete and he's going to go Davis okay then again it's asking him for who he is and he logs in with his password cat and then it says that he cannot do that so you see when you create just this user file you sort of box them into their folder they can look around at things let's see let's go to uh, change directory slash home slash pi okay 
And if we look at an ls, let's change directory to my files, and then uh, ls, uh, let's look at cars, cat, cars.txt. Okay, so what you can see is, is that with these sort of normal default permissions, now you can go in and you can change the permissions and you can do everything else, but I'm just sort of showing you when you log in as Pi and you just create folders using, create files using Nano, if you create another user that you're just going to call part of the user group like Austin is, with all these default settings, he can come in and he can look at the contents of your files. And so if I had a files called grades and I had students grades in there, I would need to change those permissions because somebody could come in and look at them. He can look at it, but can he mess with it? So let's see where he is. He's right there. So let's say that he wants to nano cars.txt to change it. Okay. He's in it, but it says warning no write permission. So if he tries to control O and then says enter, it says errors permission denied. So he can look at it. He can even get it into the editor, but he can't change it. Okay. Well, let's look at this. Let's try that again. Nano's cars. Okay. He's got that. Now let's see if he tried to control O. And let's even see if he tried to control O to his home slash car card uh, Austin car dot txt. Okay, let's see if that'll work. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now let's control X and now let's go back to home to his home, Austin's home, let's do an ls, and you see that now he has this austincar.txt cat, <coughs> austincar.txt, and then you can see that he was able to steal the file, but he couldn't mess my file up. So with the sort of default configurations, when you cr just create a new user in the user group, he can't mess up the system, he can't delete people's stuff, he can go in and look at stuff. He can't change it. He can copy it over to his folder, and then he can change his copy of it, but he can't goof somebody else up. So sort of the way your kind of default <clears throat> thing is when you create a new user in the users group, <clears throat> where you sort of are is, is that you don't have any privacy. That guy can look at everything, but he can't goof you up. He can't mess the system up. And for things in the classroom, that's usually pretty appropriate. If you were going to do this more like a real system, you would want to kind of keep people from probably even going in there and looking at things. So you would want to tighten things down a little bit. For what I do in the classroom and most things where you're working in a group, this is a pretty this is a pretty good way to do it. Okay, so now let's look around a little more. Uh, let me move this over just a little bit. Okay, there you go. So now let's do ls. Okay, and that's where he is now. I want to log out as Austin, and it should sort of just take me out of Austin. I should go back and be Pi again, and yes, you can see that I'm Pi, so now I'm back to being a super user. Okay, now let's say that I sort of see what uh, he's been doing, and I want to remove him as a user. I want to get rid of a user. That, you have to be sudo again to do that, and then you can say user, delete, and then I want to say minus R because that's going to get rid of his folders as well. I can get rid of him without getting rid of his folders. Let me just get rid of him without getting rid of his folders. Okay. And so I could say user delete Austin. Okay. So I'm going to sudo user delete Austin. Okay. And then I'm going to sudo user delete minus R. And this is going to be Davis. Okay. Now, I've gotten rid of both of those. Don't worry about that. It's saying we couldn't delete the mail file. Well, we didn't have a mail file, so it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Now let's go back. We're in home. Let's look ls. Now look at this. Neither one of them can log on. Now let's say that I tried to, to log in, and I try to log in. Okay, let's do a sudo log in, and I try to log in as Davis, okay, and cat, and it says... Uh, Login incorrect. Okay, 
because what did I do? I user deleted Austin and I user deleted Davis. Okay, let me try to log in as Austin because he sh his folder still shows up here, Austin. Okay, and Cat. Okay, still not going to let him log in. Let me see if I can control X out of that or control C out of that. Okay, <coughs> so what is going on here? I deleted both users. I deleted Austin and I deleted Davis. The difference was when I deleted Austin, I didn't do the minus R, so it left his folder intact. Okay. When I deleted Davis, I got rid of him, the user, and the horse he rode in on. I got rid of him and his folders. All right. So you can either, and, and why would you do this? Like, let's say that you had a, an employee. Let's say I had five empo two employees, Austin and Davis, and then Davis left the company, and so I want him to no longer be able to log on to the system, but I want to keep his information because maybe I need to go in and see his files and whose things are so I can log, I can delete him as a user, but I can keep his files, and that is sometimes useful. Now, if we look LS, we still have Austin there. Now I want to get rid of that. How would I do that? RM. I want to get rid of him and the stuff underneath him, uh, that folder and the stuff underneath it. So it would be minus R in Austin. Okay. Uh, yes. 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 Okay. This is getting rid of a lot of stuff. There's got to be a better way than that to do it. Control C. Okay. You get the idea. I can go in and, and I can really blast it here in a minute. But you can delete a user and keep their files, or you can delete a user and remove the files, either one. <coughs> so we've learned a lot today. We've learned how to set up users, how to control their permissions. And in future lessons, we'll talk more about how to sort of control, you know, control what people see. I mean, you can see here they were actually able to see my files. They were able to copy my files, but they were not able to make new things in my folder. They were not able to mess things up. Okay, this has been a powerful lesson. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you shortly less, uh, shortly for lesson number 20. If you're liking these things, give us a thumbs up. Think about sharing this with other people or subscribing to the channel. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. We will talk to you later.